Welcome to a mini lecture about the determinant and splittability. Um, so remember that uh, we say that a link is splittable if we can deform it so that it comes in two parts, one on the left of some plane and one on the right of some plane. So a trivial link uh, of, say, two components, that's always splittable. Um, and uh, it's a nice property for a link to have, and it's good to be able to tell whether or not a link is splittable, and that's uh, what this result is about. Uh, so it's based on page 23. Here's the result in question. Proposition. If a link L is splittable, then its determinant is zero. And uh, let's do some examples of that uh, on the right of the page here. Um, so let's let's see what the proposition tells us about these three links P, Q, and R. Uh, so let's start by working out their determinants. I'm going to start by chessboarding them in the usual way. Uh, so here I go, chessboard each one. I choose the same sort of pattern of regions in each case. Um, but what's the difference between the three links? Um, if you haven't already noticed, it's that uh, the crossings are slightly different in each case. OK, so I've chessboarded. Now I should label the regions. Uh, so there's the infinite region on the outside, I'll call it 0. And this square region on the inside, I'll call it 1. Do that every time. And now we need to work out the chessboarding signs. Um, so let me remind you about the rule for that. Uh, so at every crossing in my chessboarding, in my chessboarded diagram, uh, there's one of two there's one of two situations that happens. Either uh, my overstrand, which is here, is clockwise. From a shaded region, as in the first case, or my overstrand, it's here, is anti clockwise from a shaded region. In the first case, we give the crossing a sign plus one, in the second, we give it sign minus one. So let's look here in P, we see that the overstrand is the one going up and down, and it's anti clockwise from this shaded region. It's also anti clockwise from that shaded region, it doesn't matter which one you pick. So that's a negative sign. And I'll just write minus instead of minus 1. And you can work out that in this diagram, all the signs are negative. Uh, so now, pause the video and work out the signs for yourself. Here are my answers. Uh, this crossing, whoops. This crossing here is now positive. This one is negative. This one is negative. This is negative. Here in R, this is positive. This is positive, and this is negative. This is negative. There we are. So those are my answers. Let's tidy up. Uh, so now that we've got our uh, data here, let's write the Guritz matrices. Matrices. Uh, well, we have to start with the G plus matrix. Uh, so in this diagram, what will we put in the entry 0, 0? It's the sum of the signs around region 0 negated. So it's minus 4 negated, which is 4. And what is the entry in 0, 1? It's the sum of the signs where region 0 and region 1 meet. Well, that's all four of these, and so it's minus 4. Whoops. Let me redraw my matrix a little better. OK. 0, 1, 0, 1. We had 4 there. We have minus 4 here. And it's symmetric, so we can put minus 4 in there. And it turns out that that's 4. And let me work out the rest for you without talking through it. You can pause and do this yourself if you want to. Uh, oh, dear me. Try again. OK, so here G plus is given by. Two minus two minus two 
2 and here g plus is given by r. Well let's let me say something about this. What's the sum around what's the sum of the signs around region 0? Well, it's 0. What's the sum of the signs where region 0 and 1 meet? It's 0. So actually in this case g plus is 0. So now let me erase a row and column every time to get my actual Goetz matrix. G. That's just the matrix with a single entry, 4. G. The matrix with a single entry, 2. G. The matrix with a single entry, 0. Uh, so now the determinant of P is the absolute value of the determinant of G. So that's 4. The determinant of Q is 2 and the determinant of R is 0. Uh, so now we should ask ourselves what can we conclude using the proposition? Sorry, doing a little bit of housekeeping here, just making space for the rest of the answer. Um, okay, so P and Q are not splittable. since the determinants are non-zero. Dot P, dot Q, non-zero, sorry. Uh, and now what could we conclude about R? So here's a question, pause and ask yourself, what can we say about R? Well, look very carefully at the proposition. It says, that if the link is splittable, then the determinant is zero. In this case, the determinant is zero. So the proposition tells us nothing, because the proposition doesn't say anything about what happens if the determinant is zero. So uh, the proposition tells us nothing about R. But the link R is obviously splittable anyway. But R is obviously splittable anyway. Can you see it? I just take this uh, inner region, sorry, this inner loop and move it to the left until they're completely separated. Okay, so that was the end of our example. Now let me tell you something about the idea of how to prove the proposition. Well, um, let's suppose we're given a splittable link drawn here in white. So it's, it's a trefoil beside but not linking with a hopped link. So this is clearly splittable. These two components are separated by a plane uh, that meets the page down the middle there. Well, let me order the crossings as zero 1 and 2 in the left hand side and 3 and 4 in the right hand side. And let me order the arcs as x0, x1, x2 in the left hand side and x3, x4 in the right hand side. And then I can draw the A plus matrix. It's here. And the thing you should notice is that it's full of zeros here and here. And that's what and that what's left are a three by three matrix in the top left and a two by two matrix in the bottom right. And what are those three by three uh, what are those matrices? Well, the three by three one, it turns out, is the A plus matrix that you get just by thinking about the left hand side of the link. And the two by two matrix, that's the A plus matrix you get by thinking about the right hand side of the link on its own. So I've called those A plus L and A plus R. And it's easy to see that the A plus will have this form. So now let's form the coloring matrix itself. It's what I get by deleting a row and a column. Um, and what I've done is I've deleted the first row and the first column here. So what I'm left with now is a 2 by 2 matrix and a 2 by 2 matrix. So those are the top left and the bottom right. Now. What is the matrix on the top left? It's the A matrix, it's the colouring matrix for the left hand part of the diagram. 
uh, because I deleted, because I started with AL plus and I deleted a row and a column. What is the thing on the bottom right? That is still AR plus, plus being the important part. Okay, so now let's work out the determinant of L. It's the absolute value of the determinant of A. Um, and now A, being a block matrix of this form, its determinant is just the product of the determinants of the blocks. So it's the absolute value of the determinant of AL and the determinant of AR plus. But the determinant of AR plus is zero. Why is it zero? Because the sum of the rows is zero, as we know. And so this factor is zero, so the whole thing is zero. And that is the end of the mini lecture. Um, if you go to the notes and read the full proof uh, of this proposition, then you'll see that it works in exactly the same way I tried to spell out here.